there are other places in the country where close elections are decided by coin tosses. In this case, it's not really deciding the outcome of the caucuses. What they're doing is electing delegates to the state convention who will then decide who will get the state's nomination, the state's delegates at the national party convention. So it's one or two steps removed, but yes, it does look a little funny. But the real scandal in Iowa is not over the coin toss. The real scandal in Iowa is over the fact that almost 24 hours after the caucuses were done, there's no sense of who actually won. The Iowa State Democratic Party releases, uh, has released, or is about to release, uh, depending on what time zone you're in, uh, 50% of the results, but they don't have 100% of the results yet. And it's odd because we're not talking about large numbers of people. I was at a caucus in Des Moines, Iowa yesterday, which was one of the largest ones, and they had 680 voters. So that's not a lot of people to count. And in fact, they counted everybody by hand. So that's why people are confused and upset that the computer system or the cell phone app that they were supposed to be using to tabulate all these votes did not seem to work. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they were counting every single vote in the state. It's a smallish state to begin with. These were just Democrats, just Democrats who physically turned out to these caucusing places, I think. I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. That's Six, right. 600 people, that's not a long time to count that. You, you've got scrutineers there, I imagine, as we say, people observing it. Um, I don't know how many individual caucuses. Do you know how many individual caucuses there were in Iowa? Would there have been 100 even? I think it was, I'd be guessing here, I don't know the exact number. Someone else asked me the same question. I don't know the exact number. But I was in Des Moines, which is the largest city, and there are, I think, a couple hundred precincts in Des Moines, so extrapolate over the state. We're not talking about a huge number of voting precincts, let's say in, in the ballpark of 1,000 to 2,000, and I'm, I'm guessing again here. But the real question, I think, comes down to how they did it. They used a new process this year where they used a kind of ranked choice where you came to the caucus, you stated your preference for a particular candidate, and if that candidate received more than 15% of the vote at that caucus, they made it to the second round. The candidates that did not make it, well, they had a lot of voters who supported them who were now free to make a second choice, and they could choose one of the candidates who survived through to the second round, or they could band together and choose one of the candidates who didn't make it through on the first count. That is now, so confusing. It's like a transferable <laughs> ballot. Not, Go ahead. It's not that confusing if you have someone who knows how to do it. Right. I think the problem was they just didn't have... Well, here's actually the real problem. I think, I think this is when, when, we, when we figure out what the problem is behind all of this, I think it'll turn out to be the following. One of the choices you had between the first and second vote, if your candidate did not clear 15%, I was at a caucus where Joe Biden missed the 15% threshold. So if you're one of those Biden voters and your candidate only got, let's say, 11%, well, you could choose to go with one of the other candidates or you could choose to go home. And a lot of people simply went home. They did not want to support another candidate. So that doesn't theoretically pose a problem for the system, except for some of the people counting votes. Now they had fewer voters in the room. And I think it confused a lot of people because, for example, we had 680 at the start of our caucus. By the time they counted the first round, there were only 677. There were even a couple of votes for people who aren't even running. There was a vote for Cory Booker, who was already out of the race. And then you have people leaving after the first round, a huge number of people, not just the Joe Biden people, but a lot of the people whose candidate did make it through to the next round just decided to go home. So the number of people who remained was something like less than half of the original 680. Huh. Now, this caucus had a very competent manager. She knew what she was doing, and she knew only to count the difference. That is to say, the new votes on the second round for candidates who didn't get those votes the first round. But I imagine that for someone who didn't really know what was do what was working or how to work this system and hadn't done it before, I, I imagine it was very difficult. And I'm not sure that the app that they developed for this had appropriate programs in it or appropriate code to take in all of this information. They wanted not just to know how many delegates were won by each caucus, uh, by each precinct and, and each candidate in each precinct. They also wanted to know who won the first ballot, who won the second ballot. So this app was being asked to take in a whole bunch of information when all people really wanted to know was who got more votes than who else. Yeah. You know, it was just, wow. it was just wow. needlessly complicated reporting. They, what they could have done, I think, in retrospect, was simply report the total number of votes for each candidate at each caucus and get to all the other information 
in the weeks that followed, because there's six weeks between the Iowa caucus, roughly six, maybe seven, between the Iowa caucus and the state convention. They had plenty of time to work this out, but they tried to do it all with the fancy app on a phone, and the system was broken enough as it was, complicated enough as it was. The conspiracy theory going around is that Joe Biden did so badly that the party bigwigs spiked the result. There may be some truth to that. And in fact, as we speak right now, Joe Biden's campaign is considering going to court to stop the results from being reported huh. because they're not going to be fully reported and they're concerned that he might be in fifth place or worse, oh, maybe. God. The caucus I was at, he was in fifth place. And that's an urban caucus with people concerned about electability, some more moderate people, perhaps. The winner of our caucus was Elizabeth Warren, who actually showed up in person to give a speech. That's allowed, by the way. Campaigning within the caucus is part of how it works. Hmm. So she showed up personally. Her candidate, her delegates, her supporters, her caucus goers outnumbered the rest. But she was first, then Bernie Sanders, then Pete Buttigieg, then Amy Klobuchar, and Biden failed to qualify. Wow. wow. That, I think, was mirrored throughout the state. I don't think Warren won a whole lot of precincts, but I think she did fairly well, second or third. And Pete Buttigieg did fairly well. Bernie Sanders probably won Iowa. Amy Klobuchar and Joe Biden, nobody knows who was fourth, who was fifth. And I think Biden's people are very worried that they'll see a rapid drop off in support in other states if he is out of the top four. They, they said this morning they thought he was in the top four. A little remark escaped his spokesperson on one of the American news networks. She was asked how they did. And she said, well, we're, we're bunched up in the top four. Huh. That was her guess. If they're not bunched up in the top four, it's going to look pretty bad for Joe Biden. Yeah. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.